Welcome to the Machinist 1 to 90 leveling skills guide. In this guide we'll cover all of your skills as you train to kill bosses in one shot with a chainsaw better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this... Drill! ...to this... Drill! This series is framed in the mindset of players completely new to Final Fantasy XIV or the MMO genre in general, or generally still inexperienced. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left for their own in-depth videos just due to how much complexity is involved in perfect openness and overall rotations. This is not meant to be a purely optimal guide. If you wish to be optimal at level cap, there are further places you could research your job on. We will, however, be crafting rotations as we go to help new players understand what goes to creating openers and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. All tooltips will be shown at the level cap for each section. Level 50 for A Realm Reborn, Level 60 for Heaven's Word Skills, Level 70 for Stormblood Stuff, Level 80 for Shadowbringers Levels, and Level 90 for Endwalker. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the Journal tab of your Actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 90. Just put skills on your hotbars in a way you feel comfortable using as you are leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. If you want more info on how I set up my UI, check the description or the card for a video on it. And keep the following in mind, patches can change jobs still. Be sure to check the description for any patch notes for minor potency changes or skill changes or any other special notes. With that all out of the way, let's begin. Machinist is the most rigid feeling of the ranged DPS jobs despite having some flexibility. You have the same mobility, but for as few buttons you have, it ends up being more active a job than even Bard. Similar to Ninja, you have moments of extreme frenetic movement, and the rest of the time you really aren't doing much. It all mostly comes down to the single skill of Hypercharge, and making you attack with a 1.5 second cooldown while using other skills at the same time. You're otherwise the selfish ranged. You offer little to your group that isn't shared between all the ranged jobs, which means you can focus more on all your neat tools and how much damage you put out. Just coming at the cost of your hands when you need to mash all those buttons in the burst parts of your rotation. Plus some slight gauge management. There's not a lot, but it is there. To obtain my Sharona, you need to reach the Heavensward expansion, which is immediately accessible upon completion of A Realm Reborn. The final quest of it is called Before the Dawn. Head into Ishgard, find the Skystone Manufactory in the Western Foundation, and pick it up on any level 50 job. Let's get into the finer details of each skill. We start at level 30 with a couple already. This includes almost all of our roll actions. The only roll action we do not start with is arm's length, and you will get that in two levels. Some of these are better than others, and will be extremely important tools for you to use as you go forward. Linked in the corner and in the description is a guide specifically for these roll actions. If you don't know about them, there's your possible learning point. Level 20, Increased Action Damage. This increases our base damage and the damage of our turret by 10%. We'll talk about the turret in a moment, but this action itself kinda... doesn't mean anything. It's more part of intended balancing than an actual power boost, and 10% is low enough at a low level that you won't even notice the difference. Level 1, 2, and 26, Split Shot, Slug Shot, and Clean Shot. This is our basic combo. We want to always use our combo in order. There's no reason not to. When we are using a combo, the next skill lights up like so. We start with Split Shot, which does 140 potency of damage to a target. Then the next combo button will light up Slug Shot. It does 210 potency of damage, leading into Clean Shot. Clean Shot is 270 potency of damage. Again, use these in order. Each skill also mentions granting Heat Gauge 5 at a time. That's the little bar we got to go with the job. We'll talk about that in a bit. Otherwise, you're just going to be spamming this combo to kill enemies in single target scenarios. One enemy, keep spamming your combo. Level 4, Hot Shot. On a 40 second cooldown, this does 240 potency of damage to a single target. This is a bit stronger than Slug Shot, but weaker than Clean Shot. It's worth using just because it does bring the average damage of your attacks up. This button will also gain a few changes going forward, so we do want to get used to using this on cooldown. Interestingly, there is more to this skill. It counts as a weapon skill which means it will trigger the global cooldown, putting all weapon skills on cooldown. It is also affected by skill speed, which longer cooldown skills usually don't get benefits from. 
Mushy Mist is a job that benefits from having no skill speed if possible though, so you'll be seeing it as 40 seconds anyway. Level 10, Reassemble. On a 55 second cooldown, this makes your next weapon skill do a critical direct hit, which is nearly double the damage. The issue is that it only lasts for 5 seconds, but you're going to use this right before the specific weapon skill you want to buff anyway. If you want to use it on, say, Clean Shot, you need to use it before Clean Shot, but after Slug Shot. And you do want to be buffing Clean Shot specifically. It's currently our biggest hit. The alternative choice is to use this on Hot Shot as our second strongest skill. We're also going to be moving Reassemble to be used specifically on Hot Shot later on in levels, so it isn't entirely a bad habit to get into now. One I'll be instilling with the openers, even if it would be suboptimal. I will mention this again when we go over them. Otherwise, make sure you're using this on your strongest skills. Level 15, Goss Round. This is a skill with charges, which means it can store multiple uses. It has a 30 second charge time for a total 60 second charge from sitting at zero. The moment you use even one charge, the timer for the next charge will begin to run. Goss Round itself is a very basic 120 potency of damage. Pretty low, but it adds up quickly with a very short cooldown. Put this somewhere comfy and easy to use because there's going to be a lot of Goss Rounds going out over the levels. It is low potency because of how often it gets spammed. Use this in both single target and groups of enemies, just because free damage is free damage. Level 30, Hypercharge. This is just one of many skills you get for doing your job quests. Please do your job quest and get all of your skills as you can. They're all very strong. The investment is extremely important. I will not verbally mention this anymore for the video, but in the top left is a denotion when any skill is from a quest. This is where the heat gauge comes into play, and is the only use of heat. With a 10 second recast and costing 50 heat, your gun will become overheated. It lasts for a short 8 seconds and causes all single target weapon skills to do... 20 more potency. I want to emphasize this, single target attacks only. You're going to ignore this for AoE for a while. This is pretty underwhelming, being worth 60 or 80 potency for if you get 3 or 4 hits under it. The purpose of this skill doesn't really come into play for another 5 levels. Keep this in mind until then. Level 18, Spread Shot. This is our AoE, Area of Effect Attack. Spread Shot deals 140 potency of damage to all enemies within a 12 yarm cone in front of you. That is an insanely large cone, making it very easy to hit every enemy even when the tank pulls wall to wall. You absolutely want to be using this in big pulls, but even smaller pulls warrant using Spread Shot. Even on as few as two enemies, Spread Shot is just outright stronger than our single target attacks. The scaling on it is pretty insane. But if you want to have a bit more smoother feeling AoE, use it on three or more enemies. It can feel weird to be using AoE on just two targets, even if it is correct. Three or more though, there's no question on if you should use Spread Shot. On top of this, Reassemble works on Spread Shot. If you use Reassemble, every single enemy hit with the boosted Spread Shot will take critical direct damage. Pop this wherever you can to make your AoE even more powerful than it already was. Always remember that the more enemies there are, the better it gets. Also keep the range in mind. This puts mac and cheese more similar to that of a melee job with how you want to aim spread shot. If you're too far away, you won't be hitting the enemies furthest away. Make sure the conal AoE is hitting as far and wide as it can to hit every enemy if possible. And that covers all of the Morbius starting skills. Being only level 30, it's not very complex or difficult. Within a few levels though, we'll be seeing a much higher complexity to deal with. For now though, it's pretty simple as will be our opener. Pre-pull, reassemble, hot shot, goss round, split shot, slug shot, goss round, clean shot. There really is nothing here. We'll extend things a bit at 50 and beyond, but here, that's it. Instead, let's make some clarifying statements instead. This pre-pull reassemble, you have 5 seconds before the pull to put it up before it runs out. So you could hit reassemble right before the tank pulls to immediately put it on cooldown and still get the big hit. This is for muscle memory. 
technically it could be stronger to put reassemble on clean shot, but this puts the skill on cooldown sooner, available to use again sooner. The goss rounds we can just fire off whenever, get some free damage, and then spam your single target combo. This really is it. This is just the starting toolkit of Metronome of course, but it's going to be a slow ascent so we're better off moving forward instead of lingering on this empty thing. Level 35, Heat Blast. This skill comes with a couple of clarifying statements as well. It has a fixed 1.5 second recast time, no matter how much skill speed you stack on. It deals 180 potency of damage to a single target. Every use of this will reduce the recast time of Goss Round and a later skill we get called Ricochet by 15 seconds each. The issue is this can only be used when our gun is overheated. That means we can only use this under the 8 seconds of Hypercharge. Because Hypercharge boosts all attack by 20 potency, this is more actually 200 potency per use of Heat Blast. With the lower recast time, you can also get several more skills within your Hypercharge window, 5 Heat Blasts specifically. With such a low recast time, it's even technically stronger than Clean Shot. Point is, anytime you use Hypercharge, spam your Heat Blast button. But going back a bit, there is that note about reducing recasts. Let's say you have used both of your Goss rounds and pretend that the charge time is just paused for some reason. Each use of Heat Blast would take 15 seconds off the timer. After four Heat Blasts, you would be sitting on two charges of Goss round. Because of this, this is where the main difficulty comes in. You tend to want to be using your Goss rounds in the middle of your hypercharge windows, which means you're weaving in abilities after every weapon skill. Heat Blast, Goss Round, Heat Blast, Heat Blast, Goss Round, etc. It's pretty fast and frenetic. Only at higher levels where we have room for three charges of these can you just ignore them for the duration. Not that you would entirely want to. Everything to do with Heat Blast ends up making it a very ping unfriendly job. You'll be nickel and dimed some damage every use of Hypercharge. But your damage is still okay. You're losing a little, but it isn't the end of the world unless you're trying to do, like, ultimate level content. And maybe not even then. Level 40, Increased Action Damage 2. Same as before, this increases your base action damage and turret damage by 10% now, totaling for 20%. You probably won't notice this bonus either, but maybe you will. It's very small and again, just intended balancing. Level 40, Rook Auto Turret and Rook Overdrive. This is that turret we have been mentioning with the increased action damage, and actually brings in a new gauge. Before we actually talk about these skills, let's back up a moment to talk about a few other changes that have taken place to our toolkit. Let's look at Clean Shot and Hot Shot. Finishing a Clean Shot combo will now grant us 10 battery gauge. Hot Shot, meanwhile, will grant us even more, 20 battery every use. This is going to be our main intent with Hot Shot going forward. Not the damage, but the battery gains. It adds up very quickly, and is now a very important reason to use it on cooldown. These are the only two ways to gain battery, so get used to them. Back to the gauge in our new skill, Rook Auto Turret takes 50 to 100 gauge to use. It will spend the entire gauge, regardless of how much that is. As long as you have the minimum 50, the entirety is spent, but that's okay, because the duration of the turret increases with higher gauge. At 50 gauge, it lasts for 7 seconds. At 100 gauge, it lasts 15 seconds. While active, the turret will automatically attack your current target, dealing 70 potency of damage with every shot. This is pretty good to start, but there's more. Rook Overdrive has a separate button that you will usually not ever use. This is due to the fact that when the timer of your turret runs out, it will automatically execute Rook Overdrive. Rook Overdrive executes Rook Overload, an attack that does up to 300 potency of damage when at a full 100 battery gauge. This is a second effect of having more battery. Unfortunately, there is no easy way to tell how much each battery section is worth, since damage variance is a thing. The only time you will manually execute Rook Overdrive is, say, at the end of a fight and you can get one last turret use in. The boss will die before the full 7 to 15 second timer is finished, so you can manually pull the strings for the big shot and hear it ring. It feels a bit min maxy, but it's worth noting so you can get the main bulk of your turret's damage when you want it. Generally, we're going to want to use the turret when we have 80 gauge, due to the time not increasing linearly up to 15 seconds. It's not really an AoE move either, 
and our AoE doesn't even generate us any gauge. This is very much a boss-only kind of skill. If you can even get gauge enough to use this in trash pools, you probably just won't. Pop hotshot during the run in multi and wall-to-wall -wall pools, or when there's one or two enemies left to prepare for a boss. Then pop the turret out when you get to fighting the boss. In the middle of the tank pulling makes more sense than you might expect. You can't very well probably aim any AoE shots, so throwing out hotshot on the run for some extra battery is a good call. Just again, focus on using it for bosses and not trash mobs. If you do hit 80 gauge and think you could get 80 more gauge before the next boss, feel free to use the turret for a bit of extra damage. Level 45, Wildfire. On a two minute cooldown, this is yet another interesting interaction skill. You place a burning pitch on a single target for 10 seconds. Wildfire itself will do no damage and turn into detonator for the duration. Detonator is similar to having Rook Overdrive, and is there for ending the skill early for if the target will die before the timer runs out naturally. If the timer runs out, detonation will occur anyway. Instead of having any direct effect, the detonator will be increased in damage by 100 potency for every single weapon skill you land on the target. So if you land, say, 3 attacks, it will be a 300 potency detonation. What we want though is 6 attacks under Wildfire for a 600 potency explosion. Remember that hypercharge is 8 seconds long and we can get 5 heat blasts under it. Combine that with one more attack before or after. While it is hard to do it right now, later on with more tools we will be able to very easily combine wildfire and hypercharge together every single time. Until then, there can be some issues with gauge generation and cooldown timers not lining up. You can save up to 100 gauge in both of the bars, so it can be easy enough to delay hypercharge a little bit just to time it with wildfire. Wildfire is a bit easier to use in trash pulls than your turret. Unlike generating battery, cooldowns are always going to be ticking down, including outside of combat. So if you're two minutes away or more from the next boss fight, popping wildfire on whatever enemy seems toughest is a safe bet. Plus AoE attacks do trigger the damage increase for detonation. It does not need to be single target weapon skills. Level 50, Ricochet. This has the same 30 second charge time and two charge maximum as Goss Round. The damage differs a tiny bit as it will do 120 potency of damage, but it is an AoE. It has a 5 yarm radius doing 60 potency to all enemies around the initial target. Remember that this gets 15 seconds off the cooldown with every use of Heat Blast as well, just like Goss Round. I advise you to keep using Goss Round in AoE even though it is a single target attack. This is partially why, because you want to be using Ricochet for AoE. 60 potency per enemy isn't a lot, but Mini Kit's power comes in with a bit of nickel and diming. Plus, while Ricochet is better in AoE, it is still a single target used skill. If Goss Round is used in both, so is Ricochet. That's especially because, again, both skills get 15 seconds from every Heat Blast. So now in Hypercharge, we need to be weaving both Goss Round and Ricochet even just a little bit within the windows. Avoid wasting that bonus cooldown because you'll be gaining a lot of it, repeatedly over the duty. It adds up to a lot of damage. Death by a thousand cuts. Or, well, etheric bullets. This is something we're going to get used to with future openers. For now, just keep in mind to always weave in one of these after every heat blast to keep the cooldowns rolling. Speaking of openers, though, we have our level 50 opener, and it's basically the same as the level 30 opener. Machina Ya is extremely slow to build, until the sudden explosion of speed later on. But let's go through it and just discuss what little there is. Pre-pull, reassemble, hot shot, goss round, ricochet, split shot, slug shot, goss round, wildfire, clean shot, ricochet, split shot, slug shot, clean shot. Starting with Reassemble Hot Shot is the same. If you want the little bit of extra power having it on Clean Shot will give, go ahead. But the gains are minuscule and could even end up being losses in some very specific circumstances. From there we can double weave Goss Round and Ricochet to get both cooldowns running. They work very well together like this, especially being basically the same attack in any opener based situation. The second uses though are going to be used slightly differently, just from muscle memory. After we get another slug shot in, we will goss round into wildfire. 
This wildfire will not get a lot of benefits due to not being paired with hypercharge. Wildfire is all but explicitly made to be paired with hypercharge. We'll see going forward why it will be in the opener instead of holding on to it. You can though if you want. It may even be worth it. From there, just keep hitting your combo. Use Reassemble, Hotshot, and Wildfire on cooldown. Don't forget to hypercharge and use your turret too. It's very basic, just managing some basic timers at most. Seems like a perfect spot to introduce karaoke openers. Karaoke openers are classified by me saying the names of skills not just in a row, but the moment they are used within the game. When I say the name of a skill, that skill actually has been activated in time with the performance of the opener. This will cause some major cutting myself off later. The important thing to keep in mind is the start of the names. When I begin to say the name of a skill, that skill has gone off. So let's do it. Pre-pull. Reassemble. Hot shot. Goss round. Ricochet. Split shot. Slug shot. Goss round. Wildfire. Clean shot. Ricochet. Split shot. Slug shot. Clean shot. Marshmallow is going to continue to be slow for quite a while more. Heaven's Word doesn't do really anything to change that. We get a really cool set of skills in here though. We better, since this is the expansion Macadamia is from. Level 52, Auto Crossbow. This is the AoE version of Heat Blast. We can only use this when under Hypercharge and it has a 1.5 second recast. It deals 140 potency of damage to all enemies in a 12 Yom Cone. It's the exact same as Spread Shot, but with a much lower cooldown. That makes the damage functionally 40% higher, even if the actual numbers are the same. As long as the battle isn't about to end, hop into Hypercharge to use Auto Crossbow Spam. It's a boost of damage over just hitting Spread Shot over and over. Also more in the fact that the damage buff is only for single target attacks. That extra 20 potency on Auto Crossbow would be disgustingly good. Level 54, Split Shot Mastery and Heated Split Shot. This upgrades Split Shot into Heated Split Shot. It does an additional 40 potency of damage, now doing 180 potency. But now you can do a flip! Do a flip! Level 56, Tactician. On a 2 minute cooldown, this gives a defensive buff to all allies within 20 arms of you, including yourself. Damage is reduced by 10% for 15 seconds, and cannot be stacked with the Bard or Dancer versions of this skill. This has some obvious and some less than obvious uses. More obvious is the fact that this will help just about everyone. As we progress, bosses are going to end up having much more dangerous and painful attacks. Maybe it's several AoEs back to back, with the damage being high enough to need healing between each hit. Even in dungeons, you run into some of that. Well, pop Tactician, and you'll reduce the damage of probably at least two of them by 10%. This helps you keep your team alive, and your healers top you back up with a little less to heal. Try and aim this for the most damaging parts of fights. Attacks or mechanics that do multiple hits or the biggest hits to the whole party. Outside of extreme or higher, you tend to be able to survive handily without skills like this, but giving your team that extra edge can be of much more use than you might expect otherwise. The unexpected use would be to use it on just one person in the party, the tank. This is how you use Tactician outside of bosses. The tank is pulling wall to wall, three, five, eight enemies at once. That's a lot of damage going out. Reducing that damage by 10% for 15 seconds can be extremely beneficial for both the tank and the healer. Trash is far more dangerous than your average boss, especially with wall-to-wall -wall pulling. One extra cooldown used for keeping the tank alive is better than nothing. And if you are an experienced tank and know what pulls in a dungeon hurt more than the rest, you know exactly where you will ideally want Tactician running. This specific pull in particular is super deadly and your tank seems to be having it rough? You can help them out now. Make sure you are doing both the boss and trash uses of Tactician. You don't have a lot of party support beyond doing damage, but this one skill is quite a lot on its own. Level 58, Drill! Drill is just like Hotshot. It is a weapon skill that triggers the global cooldown and has its own cooldown reduced by skill speed. The base cooldown is 20 seconds though, half the cooldown of Hotshot. Inversely, the power of Drill is much higher, dealing a whopping 580 potency to the target. For a job about death by a thousand cuts up until now, this is a huge hit with a very short cooldown. It's so big a hit, up to four enemies, this is stronger than Spreadshot. 
Though if you really push the math, it might come out to three enemies when you factor in heat generation. So try and use drill on up to three enemies, and use it on cooldown. This is going to be our biggest hit for quite a long time, making it more important than basically anything else in our toolkit. This also means we need to move our reassemble. It comes back all these levels later to be put on drill. It only makes sense to put such a strong buff on our strongest attack. Assuming a boss that doesn't leave the arena and gives 100% uptime, every third use of drill will be buffed by reassemble. Two without, one with. And don't panic about reassemble coming off of cooldown five seconds early, you'll be fine. Level 60, Slugshot Mastery and Heated Slugshot. This is the same as Split Shot Mastery. Now Clean Shot has been heated up to a 260 potency hit. You're also somehow able to summon eight bullets with one shot and cause them to pause in midair? And I thought curving the bullet was special. Special doesn't really define our opener either. We're still really slow, but we can slot in drill and talk a few extra things. Like to start, Split Shot and Slug Shot are heated. I will not be saying those names as part of the vocal part of the opener. The opener icons and names will be the heated versions, but I will not say heated. It's for keeping things smoother. Pre-pull, reassemble, hot shot, goss round, ricochet, drill, split shot, slug shot, goss round, wildfire, clean shot, ricochet, split shot, slug shot, clean shot. So reassemble we still have on hot shot for the muscle memory, but now the DPS loss is a bit more significant now that we have drill. I will continue to have the pre-pull reassemble going into hot shot for when the reason comes along in a number of levels. However, if you actively want to play it properly, swap hot shot and drill around and always reassemble on the drill. This hot shot is purely for muscle memory. If that is not a concern for you, swap it with drill. From there though, we're just doing everything the same. Wildfire will be here to be under any level 60 party buffs available, and not be all too strong since we don't have hypercharge. All future wildfires will be paired with hypercharge though. This is also not an issue for any future Mark Zuckerberg openers. And because of this lack of changes, we're going to skip the karaoke opener until level 70. That's where the benefits come in big time with some major updates to the opener. So let's get moving into Stormblood and see why it is so special. Level 64, Clean Shot Mastery and Heated Clean Shot. The final shot upgrade is Heated Clean Shot. Weird like Spinny Jurors causes our combo finisher to do much higher 350 potency of damage. Other than being really weird jar things, that's it. Level 66, Barrel Stabilizer. On a two minute cooldown, this will automatically grant us 50 heat gauge. The drawback is that it can only be used in combat. You can't just sit around before a fight to try and farm up 100 gauge. Though in practice, that is a good thing. Simply put, we're going to use this to rush over into hypercharge. This is going to be a massive change to our opener, since we can now fit a hypercharge into it. We'll go over that after the level 70 skill, but for now just make sure you are keeping this on cooldown at all times. This is a lot of free gauge over the course of a duty, and a lot of hypercharges. This is where practicing keeping Goss Round and Ricochet on cooldown really comes into play. We're going to see a lot more uses of these skills thanks to more hypercharges and heat blasts, so we want to be practiced on it. Make absolutely sure they're in comfortable positions on your hotbars. Throw this out in trash pulls too. Why waste time with hitting Spreadshot a bunch when you can get right into hypercharge? And with keeping the cooldown running, you're getting more uses of Barrel Stabilizer naturally. Your damage is going up in an indirect way, but it is definitely going up, and getting a lot faster on average. Level 70, Flamethrower. On a 60 second cooldown, Flamethrower is a skill that sounds extremely bad if you know how stuff usually works in this game. This deals damage to all enemies in an 8 yom cone in front of you. It deals 80 potency of damage for 10 seconds. If you look at any other damage over time, or dot, in the game, you will know that dots work on a server tick and will go off every 3 seconds. That would mean you would get 3 ticks of 80 potency. That is not how Flamethrower works. Flamethrower will instead do damage upon activation and then once a second afterwards for a total 11 ticks and 880 potency over those 10 seconds. But there's a few other issues here. For one, auto attacks are cancelled for the duration of the skill. This is an AoE skill, so not really a big loss. 
For two, all movement is banned. Well, you can use it, you can move, you can hit other attacks, but doing anything that isn't just camera movement, Flamethrower will be cancelled. You must stay absolutely still to get the skill to continue. If you want to cancel it early, this ability to just move an inch is very useful. Just be careful to not do it by accident. Flamethrower is outright stronger than Spreadshot, but weaker than Autocrossbow. So the placement of Flamethrower is you have no other options except Spreadshot. No ricochets, no heat for type of charge, just Spreadshot. Don't bother with it, get right up into melee range, even closer than you already were, and pop your flamethrower. Sit back, relax, and take a drink since you got a bit of time. A bit of time to check out our level 70 opener, that is. Barrel Stabilizer alone is going to massively switch up our opener. Basically, everything revolves around it. So let's just dive right in. Pre-pull, reassemble, hot shot, goss round, ricochet, drill, Barrel Stabilizer, Split Shot, Slug Shot, Goss Round, Wildfire, Clean Shot, Ricochet, Hypercharge, Heat Blast, Heat Blast, Goss Round, Heat Blast, Ricochet, Heat Blast, Goss Round, Heat Blast, Ricochet, Split Shot, Goss Round, Drill, Ricochet, same as before, we're going to reassemble into Hotshot. But if you wish, you can swap Hotshot and Drill around. Same as before. Barrel Stabilizer is here to get us early into having Hypercharge Gauge. It doesn't matter if we use it super early or anything, since when we spend the gauge is what matters. We're gonna use a full combo before going into that Hypercharge though. This is due to setting up for party buffs. We want to delay just a little bit to make sure our burst is boosted as much as our allies can. It also works to let us set up our burst. We can weave in Wildfire into a clean shot to get the first hit of Wildfire in. The rest of the hits will be thanks to our next weave including Hypercharge, which will immediately start spamming Heat Blast. This should get us 5 Heat Blasts with 6 hits total under Wildfire. We'll also want to be spending our Goss Rounds and Ricochets we earned under Hypercharge, lest we end up overcapping. We should finish the window with one of each, which we can use a split shot to set up a double weave window to use both. From there, Drill will just barely be coming off of cooldown for us to use. Otherwise, it really all does just center around the use of Hypercharge and buffing it as much as we can. It's the main difficulty of Microwave. Everything else is just casually using stuff in any sort of order you find comfy. So let's karaoke it, get the muscle memory going for the rest of our learning. This is the base of all openers going forward, so it's just going to get more stuff put in, not slowing down at all. Pre-pull, reassemble. Hot shot, goss round, ricochet, drill, barrel stabilizer, split shot, slug shot, goss round, wildfire, clean shot, ricochet, hypercharge, heat blast, heat blast, goss round, heat blast, ricochet, Heat Blast, Goss Round. Heat Blast, Ricochet. Split Shot, Goss Round. Drill, Ricochet. Again, this is the base opener going forward. We're gonna get some further tools that are really nice to have, and some that change our opener just a little. We'll see that with Shadowbringers aplenty. Level 72, Bio Blaster. This has a 20 second cooldown and shares it with Drill. This makes it the AoE option of Drill. You use one, both go on cooldown. Bio Blaster will do 50 potency of damage and place a dot on all enemies within a 12 yom cone. This dot lasts for 15 seconds and unlike Flamethrower is a real dot. It ticks every 3 seconds. As a result, that's 5 ticks for a total 250 potency. 300 including the initial 50 potency hit. Simple math dictates that Bio Blaster is stronger than Drill on 2 enemies or more. 580 versus 600 potency. But that's not quite completely accurate. Do it on three or more enemies, like the rest of your AoE. On two enemies, continue to drill. This is because of Reassemble, making Drill a critical direct hit. While you could naturally get that crit direct hit, making sure Drill is what gets it is going to be a good idea. And looking back at Reassemble one more time, we will not be using it on Bio Blaster. Reassemble does not work on dots. 
This would cause the initial 50 potency hit to be a critical direct hit and nothing else. Well, dots can crit, but it won't be because of reassemble. This is what puts Drill firmly in the usually better category on two. Plus, if there's only two enemies left, the pull is probably over and the dot won't even get the full duration. All this combined, keep reassemble on spread shot or auto crossbow for the crit. Bioblaster is otherwise going to be an extremely strong skill to use on cooldown in trash packs. Level 74, Charged Action Mastery. Goss Round and Ricochet are both granted a third charge of themselves. This is where the hypercharge window actually becomes easier to deal with generally. Assuming there are zero seconds on the timer when you begin your hypercharge window, the Heat Blast would put you at two charges and another half a charge plus the eight second duration. That makes it that there are a few seconds of leeway. Seconds of leeway you probably will never have with how the flow of battle and using OGCDs actually works. You will still need to at least use one of each during a hypercharge window to not end up overcapping. So there is leeway there too, and this leeway is essentially always there as long as you use hypercharge with zero charges of either skill. You won't really ever be holding on to charges unless you think you can align it up with burst phases and party buffs. But your Barrel Stabilizer Wildfire Hypercharge window is already what you were trying to fit into your Burst window, and that means getting a bunch of charges anyway. Plus, you have to get Drill and Hotshot out. You have a bunch of stuff to deal with already. Keeping them both at zero can be one thing off your shoulders until you try to get into higher-end content. Level 76, Hotshot Mastery and Air Anchor. Hotshot is getting the upgrade we've been preparing for all guide long. It now is Air Anchor, dealing a much higher, much more potent, 580 potency to a single target. That makes it exactly as strong as Drill. This is why I've been showing it off as what we use Reassemble on in openers up to now. Eventually, it was going to become a very strong skill that absolutely deserves to be reassembled. It otherwise is the exact same skill. You can now just reassemble it without feeling like you are doing things wrong. Level 78? Enhanced Wildfire. The power of Wildfire has been increased. It has the same cooldown and all, but every weapon skill will now increase the power of the explosion by 220 potency. Much bigger numbers will come out of this one, with a maximum 1320 potency from Wildfire. Level 80, Promotion, Automaton Queen, and Queen Overdrive. Our Rook Auto Turret is turning into the Automaton Queen. Macintosh can summon a whole robot with a battery gauge now. It still requires a minimum 50 gauge and improves as you gain more. The minimum time is 12 seconds, up to a maximum of 20. For the duration, the Killer Queen will use Arm Punch, dealing 120 potency of damage per hit. This makes Queen a melee-based attacker, which isn't actually a worry. You might think you need to be in melee melee range. You can summon your robot from anywhere safely because after being summoned, she will use Roller Dash, a 240 potency gap closer. It is the same power as Arm Punch, having double the power, but also double the cooldown. Point of it is to get the Queen right into range of the boss. Rook Overdrive is now Queen Overdrive, executing Pile Bunker. This is still automatically executed when the timer of the robot runs out. Pile Bunker is a 680 potency hit to a target. That's more than double the power of Rook Overload. It is still a scaling potency though, so 680 isn't always going to be the actual power. It's still all the same otherwise. Power went up, much cooler summoning, it's a whole robot. Hit the button at 80 gauge where you can. But now we can deal with the level 80 opener. This is mostly going to make the rest of our openers make sense and boost up how much weaving we do. Pre-pull, reassemble, air anchor, goss round, ricochet, drill, Barrel Stabilizer, Split Shot, Slug Shot, Goth Round, Wildfire, Clean Shot, Ricochet, Hypercharge, Heat Blast, Goth Round, Heat Blast, Ricochet, Heat Blast, Goth Round, Heat Blast, Ricochet, Heat Blast, Goth Round, Split Shot, Ricochet, Drill. Air Anchor being upgraded justifies all the practice I've recommended with pre-pull reassemble on Hotshot. No longer are we going to want to move it over to Drill. Keep it on the Air Anchor. The only other change this brings in is the weaving we do during Hypercharge. Because we have a charge on both Goss Round and Ricochet going into the window, we need to immediately start weaving OGCDs between every Heat Blast. 
and will still end the window with one in each. This final drill at the end? You can weave in another Goss and Ricochet in after, before continuing your main combo. For safety, and keeping your hands comfier, you may want to take a small potency loss here between Split Shot and Slug Shot. Double weave both Goss and Ricochet here, and you will enter Hypercharge with zero charges each. You will only need to use one Goss round and one Ricochet during Hypercharge to prevent overcapping. If you don't, you'll overcap by about three seconds, which will add up over the course of a fight. It's not that bad a loss, but definitely a loss you want to avoid if you can help it. Keep all of this in mind when you progress to the 90 opener. There will be similar openings and patterns in that one too, which is where we're going to karaoke it. This one isn't quite worth doing it for just because there wasn't much changed overall. The Endwalker additions will make it worthwhile, so let's talk about those skills next. Level 82, Spread Shot Mastery and Scattergun. Spread Shot is now way cooler of an attack. Scattergun is a 150 potency hit to all targets in a 12 Yom Cone. It increases your heat gauge by 10 instead of just 5. That doubles the amount of auto crossbow shots you can do, which is now comparatively weaker. It is still only 140 potency, which is still stronger than Scattergun due to the much faster recast time. But now, it's a goddamned shotgun! You just pull out a shotgun, shoot it once, and put it away! That's why this is cool. Not anything with power, but shotgun. Thanks, Chris. Level 84, Enhanced Reassemble. Reassemble now has charges. Two of them. It still has a 55 second cooldown, but we have two things we can use them on. Air Anchor and Drill. So in openings, we can use both, then on cooldown. Or you could learn about the min-maxing of using both charges only in two-minute reopener windows. Fun stuff there if you go for learning higher-end play. Just don't forget you have two charges now. Make use of both of them. At least keep one on cooldown at all times. Level 84, Marksman's Mastery. This is an upgrade to our Heated Combo, with a poor tooltip. Heated Split Shot is up to 200 potency. Heated Slug Shot and Heated Clean Shot are upgraded to 120 and 110 potency, respectively. This neglects to mention, this means the comboed potencies too. They are 280 and 360 potency, respectively. Just some basic power boosts. Level 86, Queen's Gambit and Crowned Collider. Monty Python here isn't becoming an astrologian with card throwing. The Gambit here is a second finishing move to Automaton Queen. Pile Bunker will lead into Crowned Collider, a 780 potency hit to a target. Once again, it is a scaling potency based on your battery upon execution. This extends the length of your Queen Overdrive by about 3 seconds, which makes the manual executions much more important. If you're about to finish off a boss, Manual Overdrive will get you two extremely strong hits that you want more than an extra punch or two. It's a good little boost, but you do need to get the finishing hits to get that boost. Level 88, Enhanced Tactician. This reduces the recast time of Tactician to 90 seconds. You can now protect the team that much more often. Remember, if an attack is going to deal a lot of damage to the whole party, protect them with Tactician. 90 seconds is still relatively long, but it's way shorter than before. You really should be using it. It helps far more than you might expect. Level 90, Chainsaw. On a 60 second cooldown, this is an AoE version of Air Anchor but does not share the same cooldown. It deals 580 potency of damage to a target, and 203 potency to all enemies beyond the initial target. This is a straight line, 25 yams in range. That is very, very far, as far as any of your ranged attacks can reach. It's also a pretty wide line, but not as wide as your shotgun. You'll also be getting 20 battery gauge every use of chainsaw, just like Air Anchor. Because it is as strong as Air Anchor, you'll be using this in single target and AoE. This massively increases our battery gains. You'll be using robots a lot more, getting a lot more damage, and having more options for reassemble. Air Anchor, Drill, and Chainsaw are all 580 potency. You want to be using them all on cooldown, and using reassemble on them when available. Chainsaw will always just about line up with reassemble, being a minute long cooldown and all. But they're all interchangeable as long as you are using reassemble on one of these three for a single target. For AoE, one of them is exclusively for Chainsaw, the other you can use on Scattergun, but the one that lines up with Chainsaw is always for Chainsaw. It's far too strong to use on anything else. Abuse the crit direct hit. 
And now we can move into our final opener. We slot in Chainsaw and shift around Reassemble a bit. Well, shift around as in we have two of them now, and thus can buff two of our attacks safely. I will also remind you one last time, I will not be speaking the heated part of the main combo actions. They are too long for our purposes, and we'll just use the base names of the skills. Pre-pull, Reassemble, Air Anchor, Goss Round, Ricochet, Drill, Barrel Stabilizer, Split Shot, Slug Shot, Goss Round, Ricochet, Clean Shot, Reassemble, Wildfire, Chainsaw, Automaton Queen, Hypercharge, Heat Blast, Goss Round, Heat Blast, Ricochet, Heat Blast, Goss Round, Heat Blast, Ricochet, Heat Blast, Goss Round, Drill, Ricochet. As before, we're trying to abuse our Wildfire and Hypercharge windows, but now with the addition of Chainsaw, we can also get out our Queen. As such, we want to shift things around a bit. After our Slug Shot, we can use Goss Round and Ricochet to spend them as party buffs are all put up. When we finish Clean Shot, put up Reassemble, and then Wildfire. Remember, Wildfire being second is extremely important for making sure you get six attacks under the timer. We reassemble the Chainsaw instead of the earlier drill because again, party buffs. The pre-pull air anchor is useful for aligning the cooldown for later down the road, and this one is outright for the damage. This Chainsaw will get us to 50 gauge, meaning we can both summon our Queen and head into Hypercharge. Queen does benefit from party buffs on summoning, so this is the ideal place to summon her, even if it is only 50 gauge. From here, the Hypercharge is all the same. The only addition here is that because of Chainsaw lengthening our opener, we can get out another drill right at the end without a filler GCD from our main combo. We'll also be spending the rest of our Goss rounds and Ricochets as normal. If you have any left, no point holding on to them. From there, it's filler, using your big hits on cooldown, and keeping the flow going. Remember to summon your robot, hypercharge as it comes around, and make sure to do big bursts every two minutes. Now for our final karaoke opener. Macklemore is going to sound like Macarena during this one, but you could do it. Just again, be absolutely sure your buttons are well laid out to keep your hands comfy and out of pain. Pre-pull, reassemble, air anchor, goss round, ricochet, drill, barrel stabilizer, split shot, slug shot, goss round, ricochet, clean shot, reassemble, wildfire, Chainsaw, Automaton Queen, Hypercharge, Heat Blast, Goss Round, Heat Blast, Ricochet, Heat Blast, Goss Round, Heat Blast, Ricochet, Heat Blast, Goss Round, Drill, Ricochet. And that's how we end Machinima. It's a busy job with Hypercharge, but relatively chill the rest of the time. Chill enough to constantly say the name of the job wrong. I hope that bothered you all immensely, because I enjoyed causing that discomfort. Thank you for watching the Machinist 1 to 90 leveling skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. I am always seeking to improve, as should you. Don't stop with this guide, even if I succeeded in helping you improve. Please leave a rating, comment, sub, those really do help creators. Or even go follow my Patreon. Have fun in your adventures across Eorzea, and may the power of Anadid Hogs lay waste to your enemies.